for the headlines. Weather forecast. Due to scorching temperatures, DepEd has halted in-person classes last April 29 to 30. Local news. The Council has approved the construction of a new city hall complex and government center. Clenro spread has a coastal cleanup initiative. Normin prepares for the peak of the dry season. Effort to promote infant health, establishing newborn screening as a standard practice in Oro. National news. House leaders are urging an, inv an investigation into the deep fake Marcos audio. Pimentel describes René Sagisag as a statesman rather than a politician. International news. Protesters assert their presence as Biden attends the annual White House Correspondents' Dinner. Entertainment. Pinoy Big Brother commences the initial phase of auditions. K-pop and K-drama celebrities are set to arrive in the Philippines in May 2024. Sports. Sam Katantan, a fencer, is a newest Filipino athlete to secure a spot in the Olympics. In the PBA, Miralco strengthens its playoff chances with a dominant victory over Magnolia. International feature Alexis Monsanto promotes Filipino solidarity at Hearts Fashion Week. National feature Playwright Floyd Quintos has passed on. Trivia Can cats perceive colors? Good morning, Philippines. Maganda umaga, Luzon. Huwag may adla, Visayas, huwag Mindanao. Today is Thursday, May 2, 2024. I am Athalia P. Sanyal. Weather forecast. Due to scorching temperatures, DepEd has halted in-person classes last April 29 to 30. The Department of Education has suspended in-person classes in all public schools across the Philippines last April 29 to 30 due to extreme heat and a planned nationwide transportation strike. In response to the latest heat index, forecast and the transport strike announcement, DepEd has mandated asynchronous classes or distance learning for these dates. Additionally, all teaching and non-teaching staff are not required to physically report to their stations. However, organized activities by regional and schools division offices may proceed as scheduled, ensuring safety measures for all participants. Private schools have the option to adopt the same measures. This move comes amidst concerns about classroom conditions in the Philippines' tropical climate, prompting a gradual return to the old academic calendar, with a break from April to May, as opposed to a stopgap measure. Local news. The council has approved the construction of a new city hall complex and government center. The Cagayan de Oro City Council approved two significant ordinances last April 22, 2024, enabling the construction of a new city hall complex and government center, marking a pivotal moment in the city's infrastructure development. These ordinances empower Mayor Rolando Clarex Uy to finalize agreements for the acquisition of a property in Barangay Canituan and Carmen, paving the way for the Envision projects. Mayor Uy's urgency in certifying these ordinances underscores the administration's dedication to accelerating the city's progress. The proposed site not only accommodates the city hall complex, but also includes plans for a government center and ecotourism site reflecting a comprehensive approach to centralizing government ser services and promoting sustainable tourism. This initiative, supported by previous resolutions, aims to address the growing administrative needs of the city while enhancing accessibility and environmental stewardship. Glenros spearheads a coastal cleanup initiative. 
They arrive in large numbers, armed with gloves and sacks, ready to combat the debris littering the seashore. The local government of Cagayan de Oro, through the City Local Environment and Natural Resources Office, marked Earth Day 2024 with a coastal cleanup activity last April 20 in Barangay Lapasan and Gusa, in collaboration with Kusgan Volunteers Incorporated and the Weekend Cagayan de Oro City Movement. The Weekend CDO Movement is a multi sectoral environmental advocacy group focused on promoting sustainable development and collective action to address complex environmental issues. Volunteers from various sectors, including schools, businesses, and civic organizations, join forces for the coastal cleanup, emphasizing the importance of community engagement in environmental conservation. The activity, part of Earth Day celebrations, aim to raise awareness and foster a sense of responsibility towards preserving the environment. The Clenro-led initiative involved simultaneous cleanup efforts in several coastal areas across the city, highlighting the collective commitment to environmental stewardship. City Councilor Malvern Esparcia underscored the urgency of addressing climate change by proposing a declaration of a climate emergency for Cagayan de Oro. As a part of the program, participants signed a pledge to protect the environment and work towards a sustainable future for all. North Mean prepares for the peak of the dry season. Amid scorching temperatures, Northern Mindanao residents are urged by Pagasa to brace for the ongoing dry season, with Weather Services Chief Anthony Joseph Lucero stressing the importance of readiness. Lucero's re Lucero's recent press conference in Cagayan de Oro shed light on the region's weather outlook, emphasizing Pag-asa's proactive approach in issuing warnings well in advance. While urging preparation for the peak of the dry season, Lucero assured the community in a pending shift to cooler weather with the onset of the rainy season. He addressed concerns about water scarcity, advising residents to adapt agricultural practices accordingly and expressing optimism for water levels to normalize soon. Despite the discomfort, Lucero urged patience and reminded everyone that relief is on the horizon. Effort to promote infant health, establishing newborn screening as a standard practice in Oro. She championed the ordinance as a demonstration of the city's commitment to upholding fundamental human rights, particularly the right to health. By institutionalizing newborn screening, they aim to protect every child and ensure early detection and treatment of heritable conditions. The ordinance, if passed, will establish comprehensive screening protocols, prioritize accessibility and quality care, and collaborate with healthcare professionals and stakeholders to build a sustainable system. This reflects her to strong commitment to leaving no newborn child behind and prioritizing the health of the community's youngest members, ultimately contributing to a brighter, healthier future for Cagayan de Oro City. <laughs>
national news. House leaders are urging an investigation into the deep fake Marcos audio. Two House leaders have called for an investigation into a deep fake audio impersonating President Ferdinand Marcos Jr., allegedly ordering military action against China. Senior Deputy Speaker Aurelio Gonzalez Jr. labeled it a national security threat and urged the Department of Information and Communications Technology and Cybercrime Investigation and Coordinating Center to persecute those responsible. Deputy Speaker David J.J. Suarez stressed the importance of updates on the investigation, suspecting the origin of the fake audio in the southern region without providing evidence. He also reminded military personnel to follow official channels for instructions. The spread of the deep fake audio amid tensions with Beijing in the West Philippine Sea has raised concerns, with the National Security Council suggesting possible links to ongoing military exercises. Pimentel describes Rene Sagisag as a statesman rather than a politician. Senator Aquilino Coco Pimentel III honored former Senator Rene Sagisag, a close friend of his late father, Senator Nene Pimentel, during Sagisag's wake at Santuario de San Antonio Parish in Makati. Both Sagisag and Senator Nene Pimentel were known for their advocacy for human rights during the Marcos dictatorship era. Pimentel praised Sagisag's integrity and described him as a statesman rather than a mere politician. He acknowledged Sagisag's decision to serve only one term as a senator, highlighting the various ways one can contribute to the country beyond elective office. International News Protesters assert their presence as Biden attends the annual White House Correspondents' Dinner. U.S. President Joe Biden is scheduled to deliver a light-hearted roast during the annual White House Correspondents' Association Dinner on Saturday night, set against the backdrop of ongoing protests related to his support for Israel's conflict with Hamas. Demonstrators chanting slogans and carrying banners gathered outside the event venue engaging with arriving guests. Among them were hundreds of protesters urging journalists to boycott the event and expressing discontent with the administration's stance on the conflict. Biden, in a bid to avoid the large protests at the main entrance, opted for a discreet arrival through a back entrance, where he encountered smaller groups of demonstrators calling for a ceasefire in the conflict. The event itself, known colloquially as Washington's Nerd Prom, typically brings together a diverse crowd of journalists, politicians, and celebrities in a grand hotel banquet hall. It's an evening filled with camaraderie and good-natured humor, often highlighted by the president's closing remarks, where he playfully reaves reporters and other attendees. This year, the hosting duties fall to Saturday night, lives calling shows. Meanwhile, the ongoing conflict between Israel and Hamas, which has been ongoing for six months since the militant group's attack on southern Israel on October 7, has led to significant casualties and a dire humanitarian situation for Gaza's population of over 2 million people, according to Palestinian health authorities. Entertainment, Pinoy Big Brother commences the initial phase of auditions. Several hopefuls for the upcoming seasons of Pinoy Big Brother camped outside the Quezon City Mall overnight, eagerly awaiting the first round of auditions. Over 4,000 individuals have registered, forming long queues around the mall. Laurenti Joggi, ABS-CBN's head of TV production, expressed delight at the turnout after six years of on-ground auditions. Joggy emphasized the search for unique and interesting housemates 
with aspirants coming from various parts of the Philippines and even flying in from the United States. Each hopeful, in care, each hopeful carried vibrant dreams and compelling stories, including aspiring P-pop idols inspired by Pini's success in a person with a disability aiming to challenge stereotypes. Joggy encouraged Filipinos to edition clarifying that all plans are subject to change based on the emerging housemates. He also cautioned against fake auditions, emphasizing that the official schedule will only be posted on PBB's official social media pages. PBB can be watched on various platforms starting in July. K-pop and K-drama celebrities are set to arrive in the Philippines in May 2024. May promises an array of thrilling events for Filipino K-pop enthusiasts and K-drama aficionados with electrifying concerts and intimate fan meetings lined up throughout the month. The excitement kicks off with Treasures Reboot Tour in Manila on May 4, followed by Eunice fan signing activities in Cebu and Pasig. The K-Wave Music Festival on May 11 will feature performances by The Boys, From Is 9, and P-pop acts. Actress Park Min Young will hold a fan meeting on May 12, followed by actor An Bo Yoon on May 25. And Haipen will conclude the month with a fan meeting at the Mall of Asia Arena on May 28. For more updates on K-pop and K-drama and K-stars, visit the Hallyu Corner microsite. Sports Sam Katantan, a fencer, is the newest Filipino athlete to secure a spot in the Olympics. Filipino fencer Sam Katantan secured her ticket to the Paris Olympics by clinching victory in the women's foil event at the Asia Oceana Zonal Olympic Qualifiers 2024 in Dubai. Overcoming Kazakhstan's Sofia Aptayeva in a tense final, Katantan battled through a late deficit and a knee injury ultimately tr triumphing with a decisive point. This achievement marks her as the first Filipino fencer to qualify for the Summer Games in 32 years, adding to the roster of Philippine athletes heading to Paris. Despite her injury struggles, Tatantan's determination and perseverance have paid off, earning praise from her mother and her the fencing community. In the PBA, Meralco strengthens its playoff chances with a dominant victory over Magnolia. The Meralco Bulls showcase a dominant defensive performance, overpowering the Magnolia hot shots with a 74-51 victory at the Phil Sports Arena, bolstering their playoff aspirations in the 2024 PBA Philippine Cup. With their second consecutive win, the Bulls improved to a 5-5 record with one game remaining in the elimination round. Conversely, the Hotshots suffered their second straight loss, dropping to a 5-4 with two games left in, this, in their schedule. Meralco coach Luigi Trillo credited his team's solid defense and highlighted their collective effort, especially considering the absence of key players from Magnolia. Despite a brief rally by the Hot Shots in the third quarter, the boss maintained control, sealing the win. Raymond Almazan was named player of the game for his 12 points and 11 rebounds, while Chris Newsom contributed 12 points, 8 rebounds, and 7 assists. However, Meralco faced a setback as star guard Aaron Black exceeded the game in the third quarter due to a leg injury. Magnolia struggled offensively, recording their franchise low of 51 points, with Ayan Sangalang leading their efforts with 8 points and 10 rebounds. International Feature Alexis Monsanto promotes Filipino solidarity at Art Hearts Fashion Week. Renowned Filipino designer Alexis Monsanto made a stylish comeback to the runway at the annual Los Angeles Fashion Week hosted by Art Hearts. Presenting a vibrant collection infused with Filipino pride, 
Monsanto highlighted his signature flair for colorful designs and feminine touches like ruffles. Headlining the opening night, he expressed his desire for more Filipino designers to receive recognition on such platforms. Joining Monsanto were novel creations specializing in formal Philippine attire and accessory designer Victoria Mejia of Victory A. Minodri. According to Amiel Noble, showcasing Filipino products in mainstream fashion helps elevate their recognition and authenticity. Monsanto sees his current career stage as an opportunity to mentor emerging Filipino designers and promote Philippine styles and talents to wider audiences. Beyond LA Fashion Week, collaborations between Monsanto, Noble, and Mejia aim to continue celebrating their uniquely Filipino craftsmanship one creation at a time. National Feature Playwright Floyd Quintos has passed on. Filipino playwright Floyd Quintos passed away on Saturday, as confirmed by his family. In a heartfelt Facebook post, his niece Selena Quintos shared that Floyd suffered a heart attack that morning and passed away in the hospital emergency room at the age of 63. Describing him as not only an esteemed playwright and director but also a beloved family member and friend. Salina expressed the profound loss felt by those closest to him. Born Florencio Luis Antonio de la Cruz Quintos in Manila on April 17, 1961, Floyd was a multifaceted talent known for his contributions to theater, journalism, and screenwriting. He began his career as a journalist before transitioning to theater where he excelled as both an actor and a director. Floyd's legacy includes numerous accolades, including nine Don Carlos Palanca Memorial Awards for Literature. He was honored by the UP College of Mass Communication with the Glory Award in 2019 for his outstanding contributions to Philippine theater. His final play, Grace, is scheduled to be staged in May. The wake will be held at Arlington Memorial Chapels in Quezon City with further updates to be provided by the family. Salina Quintos expressed gratitude for prayers, love, and support during this difficult time. <music> Trivia Can cats perceive colors? Cats possesses the ability to perceive colors, although their range is not as extensive as that of humans. Their eyes are structured in a way that makes blue and yellow hues more discernible. While red and green may appear as varying shades of gray, similar to the experience of individuals with red-green color blindness. Because of this limitation in color perception, Cats rely heavily on brightness and motion to navigate their environment. Like human eyes, cat eyes contain a retina with rods for low light vision and cones for detecting color. However, cats have only two types of cone cells compared to humans, three and their total number of cone cells is significantly fewer, resulting in a narrower color spectrum. Conversely, cats possesses a larger number of rod cells, granting them superior night vision capabilities compared to humans. And that's the information we got from here and abroad. Keep listening and watching. Please subscribe, follow, like, and share Pinoy Rob on YouTube channel. And thank you very much for watching Pinoy Rob news channel at the end the Oro. And I request another to support and subscribe and turn notifications for more updates and more info. Again, thank you very much and have a wonderful day.